Let's begin our discussion of orienteering by taking a look at orienteering maps. Orienteering maps are very detailed topographic maps which are in a number of ways quite different from the typical maps that you might be able to find. We are going to look at a couple of typical maps first. Here we see what's known as a USGS map and it, we can see down here Laurel Hill Lake. This is part of Laurel Hill State Park. We can see the road that runs through the park. We can see a couple of trails here. We can see contours. Those are the curly lines all over the place. And we can make out here a parking lot. But there really isn't much detail on this map to work with. It is a topographic map. The second one is actually the map you get from the park. And it looks sideways because, for reasons of convenience, they printed the map not with north at the top as is usual, but with east as the top, which is over here. So it looks sideways, but we can see in it the lake again, the road that goes through the park, trails, okay, a couple of buildings, parking lots, and some labels on things so that we can look stuff up by the name. Okay. Now, here is an orienteering map of Laurel Hill State Park. Okay. Or orienteering maps are five color and are drawn to magnetic north. And we'll see that in just a few minutes. But let's talk about the fact that they're five color and we want to look at each of the colors separately. We're going to start with black. Black is used for two purposes, to show man-made objects and to show rock features. So the road through the park is certainly a man-made object and it is this black line. Buildings like here or here or here or a group of buildings over here are all man-made objects, black. Some objects are only partly black, like this. This is a parking lot. It has a black edge and some black lines running through it, but uh, most of the color is sort of a dark brown. Okay. Now, there are other things as well on the map that are man-made. For instance, all of the trails are. Here's a trail. It has relatively fat, wide dashes. That's because this particular trail is wide enough in order to drive a car on. Here's a different trail. This one has just tiny dashes. And the dashes be are that small because it is only two to three feet wide. So on this map, we can actually tell something about the trails just by how they're drawn. In addition to trails, there are a few other features we want to point out that are man-made, like this. This long, thin dash line is what is known as a ride. A ride is a, an opening through the forest, but it is not intended as a trail. It is there because of something else. Usually, a water line, or a sewer line, or an electric line that is buried when they are put in the ground, naturally, they clear off the top of the ground, and that creates a pathway through the forest. It's not really a trail, but it's open enough to be used like a trail. So, that's what a ride is. Also, we want to take a look at these things. It's these little black X's here, or here, or here. These are what are known as miscellaneous man-made objects. We cannot have a different kind of symbol on the map for every kind of thing that people make. There are just too many of them. So, for things like swing sets or fireplaces, uh, stuff like that, we represent them with a black X. Okay. 
Now I said that black was also used for rock features. Here are a couple of rock features. These little black dots are boulders. You can see some things that are actually black triangles here as well. Black triangle is known as a boulder group and it means that there's more than one boulder together. And then there's these little black circles here. These are called cairns and what they really are is rock piles. Okay, So that's the nature of uh, the black things. Let's take a look next at yellow. We call this yellow. Okay? And we refer to an area like this one as open. Okay? Open means that it has no trees, or if it has any trees, they are shown individually. It also means that it's probably like mowed grass. So it's very easy to work with and get through. There's also a lighter yellow here. This is rough open. And the difference is that instead of being mowed, it is just allowed to grow. So in the spring, it might have grass or weeds that are oh, a couple inches high. But by the end of summer, it might be three or four or even five feet high. But it is still open so that if there are any trees in it, they are shown individually. Here is an individual tree, this green X, or here. Uh, here, a second green X. Okay. There are also little green circles like this one or this one. The green circles are what we call a copse. A copse is a small group of trees, like two or three together. Okay. The other green spots we'll get to in a moment. Now, there are a couple of other things that are yellow. Down here, we see an area that's kind of speckled yellow. Actually, here's another one, but they're not the same. This one is what we call open with scattered trees. That means it is basically open and probably mowed, but it has too many trees to show individually. But it also has not enough trees to regard it as forest. So this is what I said is open with scattered trees. This one is rough open with scattered trees. Same idea, just not mowed. The last yellow thing we're going to take a look at is this one. It is sort of yellow with black dots scattered through it. It is sand. Well, that's the beach. So that's why it looks that way. Those two colors, black and yellow, are the most useful to the beginning orienteer because they provide the easiest way to get around from one place to another. Now let's take a look at the color that covers most of the map, white. White is open forest. It's called open forest because it's easy to get through. In fact, if you were so inclined and it was reasonably flat, you could run through it. So it's sometimes called runnable forest. It doesn't have really much in the way of little brush or saplings to get in your way. So running is possible. But there are other forest areas on here that are not white. They're green. And with green, it is essential that you understand that the darker the green, the thicker the forest. So, here is a light green area. That means that it has some saplings or some brush. And you couldn't probably run through it, but you could at least jog through it uh, reasonably well. And then you get to medium green, like this over here. Here you can't run at all. You can walk at best. This is medium green, uh, has a lot of saplings or a lot of brush, or on this particular map, mountain laurel. This is a big chunk of mountain laurel here. And then there is dark green. Here's a little dark green patch. Here's another. The dark green patches are even thicker. They are essentially impassable you go around dark green. If you were to try to go through it, there's only two possible ways. You might be able to crawl under it. Wouldn't be very pleasant. Or you'd have to bring a machete and cut your way through. 
uh, by the way. The park would not appreciate that. So that's, that's the forest areas. We also have blue for water features. Here's the lake. Here's some, a stream. We have another stream over here. And we have a marsh. That's this thing right here. Things that are containing water are blue. The last color on the map is brown. And not the brown that we saw in the parking lot, but rather these brown lines that are curving all over the place. These are contour lines. Contour lines connect points of equal elevation, and they are an attempt to show you the shape of the mountain, or the hill, or the land. Okay? So, if we started at the top of a hill, we would draw a line that basically goes all the way around the top, and then we would move down and draw another, and another, and another, and that would give us a shape for the hill. Okay? You have another little video on contours that you can take a look at if uh, you need to. For here, basically we need to understand that when the contour lines are relatively far apart, as they are in here, then it has a nice gradual slope to the land. Whereas, if the contour lines are close together, it is very steep. And whenever you're going across the contour lines, you're either going uphill or downhill. So those are the colors. Now, you don't have to remember all the things I just talked about in terms of how they appear on the map. You can look at the legend. The legend is going to give you the names of all the things that are there and give you an example of what they look like on the map so that you can see the trails, you can see the rock features, you can see what water features look like, the contour features, the open land features, the, the thick forest features, they're all in the legend. But you can also see down here a scale. Orienteering maps are metric. This is because they are drawn to an international standard and the international standard for measuring things is metric. So. Here we see this is a distance of one centimeter, and it represents a hundred meters on the map. Two centimeters, two hundred meters. Okay. If we look at the top of the map, we can see that this is a scale of one to ten thousand, that its contour interval is five meters. That means as we draw one contour line and move down to the next and the next and the next, we are going down five meters, five meters, five meters each time. We can also see here these black lines with the N at the top. These are drawn to magnetic north. That means that they are pointing to the magnetic north pole, and we will use that information as we try to go around a cor an orienteering course. Okay. Now, I also said that Everything here was standardized. So, to give you an idea of what I mean by that, let's take a look at a couple of maps that are not from this country. Here is a piece of a map from Switzerland. You'll notice that the features are depicted in the same way. We have Lots of roads going all over the place, some nice open areas. We have some really steep contour lines right in here. Okay, here is a map from Canada. Again, everything is shown in the same way. It has a fair amount of green on the map. It also has a lot of water features on the map. Okay, and the last one I'll show you is from Finland. Again, same kind of stuff over here. Now, this is the Finnish legend, and I mean that because all the words are in Finnish. The deal is that once you learn what the how the symbols are appearing on the map and what they represent, 
you don't really care what language you're dealing with. You can move from one country to another and do orienteering wherever you are because the symbols on the map are the same for everyone.